All right, thank you guys for joining us today. Today we are going to be talking about the different ways to teach in the blended learning model. For today, we're going to be talking about your Zoom setup, how you can set up your different display screens, the multiple ways that you can have your camera set up in your classroom to facilitate different types of learning. We're also going to talk about screen sharing, being able to monitor your kids online and during just learning at the same time while your students are in your classroom. We're going to review how to redo your GoGuardian settings, also some common issues and solutions, and then we're going to run through an actual live demo where we're showing you how you can actually set up your camera with your computer and projector within the classroom. So the first thing that we want to cover is just giving yourself and your students some grace. So this is something like we've been talking about since last March something that is brand new to all of us and we've never done this before. And it's okay if it doesn't work exactly the way you want it the very first time. If you know you try a certain setup and it worked for you, great. If you try something and your kids are saying like, hey, this isn't working for us, that's okay too. This is the time to do some trial and error and just see what works and what doesn't work. Include your students in that process as well. Let them bring them into the conversation what works for you guys, especially when they're at home? What works when I'm, you know, in the classroom and I'm using my camera this way? Does this work for you? Is the lighting okay? Those types of things. Remember that we're all in this together and we're all in the same boat. So we're all <laughs> practicing this and doing this for the very first time. So again, give yourself some grace. Don't be so hard on yourself. If it doesn't work the first time, that's okay. But we just have to go through, kind of have to practice and see what's going to work for us and what's going to work for our students. And then so now we're going to kind of talk about Zoom and something that some of you might not know about. Zoom has something called dual screen mode. It's definitely an option. If you like your setup right now with Zoom, you do not have to change it. We just wanted to mention this just in case it would help out anybody out there. So what dual screen mode is, is it makes a way for you to be able to share your screen and have your students show up full screen on the other side right away. You can easily move your students around if you wanted to slide them on the projector. That way your students in class can see your students at home. And it looks very, very weird at first, but you definitely get used to it and you start loving it. How you actually equip dual screen mode is you would hit that little up carrot next to your arrow, uh, next to the stop video. Then you would go to video settings. And then in general, you would just check the box that says use dual monitors. Once you do this, it actually doesn't take into effect until the next time you are in a Zoom meeting. So if you're in a Zoom meeting currently, you would have to leave that Zoom meeting, come back in for you to actually see what dual screen mode looks like. Dual screen mode also only works when you have two monitors. So I couldn't use it if I'm just using my Chromebook because it only has one screen, but I can use it at my desktop right now because all of our teacher desktops are equipped with two monitors. So it would show all of my students on one side and then one student on the other screen. So I could pin a student if I would like to, or I can pin myself just so I can see what I'm showing my students. But then when I screen share, I can see what I'm screen sharing on one device and then all of my students full screen on the other. So we just wanted to kind of give you a couple of visual um, examples of what this would look like. So the first one, the top image is gonna be what it looked like when you're not screen sharing. So dual screen mode allows for two separate windows of Zoom to pop up. So one, the one on the left is like the active speaker. So that could be you, that could be a student that's talking. It could be you pinned a specific student because you want to have them kind of in focus. And then on the other screen is where all of your other kids are going to be. Once you begin screen sharing, this is where the beauty of dual screen mode comes in because when you don't have that enabled, when you screen share, your group of kids kind of get clumped down into one and then you have to kind of drag and spread it out. Well, this way, when you screen share, your screen share goes on one screen and your kids stay the same. They stay large in their own window on another screen. So you don't have to try to resize and find them. Where do they go? They're always going to be in that separate window. So that's what that bottom image looks like. That's what it's gonna look like when you are screen sharing with dual screen mode enabled. Something else with Zoom that happens is automatically when you join any Zoom meeting, it is set to enter full screen mode on its own automatically every single time. 
this can get really, really frustrating, especially if we have a lot of different things open because we're trying to teach our kids. So we've got our email, we have Aries open for attendance, we have our Google Slides open and any other program we need. When Zoom automatically goes into full screen mode, it hides everything. So we wanted to go over just a few ways of how you can get out of full screen mode. And also if you wanted to just disable that automatic full screen mode, we're gonna talk about that as well. So if when Zoom is in full screen mode, you can get out of it by hitting escape on your keyboard or double clicking on your monitor with your mouse where your full screen shows. Double clicking takes you out of the full screen mode, also so does pushing escape. If you want to stop Zoom from constantly going into full screen mode, because you're always finding yourself exiting it anyways, you can actually change that by going to the little up carrot arrow next to the video button, go to video settings, and then in general, you want to uncheck where it says enter full screen automatically when starting or joining a meeting. This would then stop Zoom from entering full screen mode automatically, but if you wanted to go into full screen mode, you then can do that on your own yourself under your control. So the next thing that we wanted to kind of touch on was moving that control bar around because I know sometimes it kind of gets in the way and maybe we have tabs open or whatever and we just need to kind of move it out of our way. So when you have that control bar open, you'll see at the bottom, it'll say you are sharing your screen and I'll have a little arrow. So if you click that arrow, it'll drop it down to the bottom of your screen or if it's at the bottom of the screen, it'll have an arrow pointing up and it'll shoot it to the top of the screen. Another thing that you can do is you can just click and hold and you can drag that bar around wherever you want on your screen to kind of get it out of the way of whatever you're doing on your screen right now when you are sharing your screen in Zoom. So now we're going to switch focus and we're going to look at Google Meet because some of you might also be using Google Meet in your classroom to video conference with your students. So if you're in Google Meet, you can, one thing that we suggest is you can be in the meeting twice, once on your desktop and once on your Chromebook. You can do the same thing in Zoom as well. The reason why this is one suggestion from us is because if you're walking around your classroom, by taking your Chromebook with you, you can see all of your students in distance learning when you're away from your actual teacher desk, but you can also monitor the chat or talk with your students if you still have the chat going. You also want to check and make sure that you are in gallery view on Google Meet. And how you do that is you can click the three vertical dots in the bottom right hand corner go to change layout and you wanna choose tile view. And then in tile view, you can actually slide a little blue dot all the way to the right. And it'll allow you to see up to 49 students within your tile view. Of course, you won't have 49 students at home, but it's just nice to set it that way. That way, just in case you're combining classes or you're having something after school, you can see as many students as you can within one screen. We've also heard a lot of teachers say that it's really hard for them to see themselves when they're in Google Meet because they have to look up in the very top right hand corner to see themselves and to also see what their screen share is. You can actually include yourself within your tiled view in Google Meet. And you can do this just from clicking at the top in like the little, um, there's like a little grid box. And you can check the box that says include yourself in the grid. And then also check the box that says enable grid view by default. This allows you to see all your students in tile view. And then it also puts you within that setting. That way you can see if what you're showing behind you, or you can also see what your screen is sharing. Another thing we wanted to point out is students can pin your face or your image. So if you're standing at the board and you're using your new camera that we'll get into in a second, and you're pointing out what's on the board or you're writing something on your whiteboard or pointing out what's on the projector and you want your students to see you, there's something known as pin. Pinning the screen makes that person's image on the student side really large and the student has to do it themselves. So if I'm a student in a class, I could pin my teacher, Mr. Byer, to show what he's actually looking at. So just showing your students different tools that are available to them within Google Meet can really help. And we did mention it before in Zoom, but Zoom also has a pinning button as well for the students when they're on their Chromebook and it works the same way. They just hover over the video feed and click on the little thumbtack. And then in Google Meet, if you're wanting to change your video or your 
camera settings or your audio settings. You can do that, but it, you have to. It's there's a couple steps that you have to do to to enable this. So to change your video feed. So if you're going from your webcam in your computer to your new camera feed, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go to those three little dots in the bottom right hand corner, two settings, and then for video you would choose your normal webcam, which is if you're using your monitor, it's going to be the integrated RGB camera. That's your webcam that's integrated into your new monitor. You'd want to switch to your Logitech meetup one. It's going to be the echo canceling. It's going to have in parentheses to say Logitech meetup. If you're wanting to change the audio, so that's where your microphone and your speakers are coming from, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to click the three dots, go to settings, choose audio, and then switch to echo canceling in parentheses Logitech meetup. Then if you're going to want to switch back to your webcam, you're going to follow the same steps. Click on the three dots, go to video, switch back to the integrated RGB. That's how you're going to, in Google Meet, that's how you're going to go through and switch different um, video feeds. But now that we've talked about like this video feed setup, how to switch back and forth with your camera, how do you even manage the three screens? When we talk about three screens, you have your teacher computer with your two monitors and your projector. Adding that projector is like adding a third screen. So how can we use this? How do can we set it up? You have two options. One option is where all of your screens are separate. So if you look at this picture on the left, it shows the one, two, and the three in completely separate processes. What that means is if I want, you know, a, my slideshow on screen one and my two is in the middle, I have to click it and drag it over to screen one, or I have to click it and drag it over to screen three. So by having all of the screens separate, that means that you're dragging things from one screen to the other, just like you're doing right now with your two monitors at your desk. If you look at this image on the right, it's different. What this means, if one of your monitors is just for you, like this screen number one, but the other screen, two and three, that means that whatever's on screen number two, your projector also shows. So if you think back before COVID, when we only had one screen at our teacher desk, think about what your setup was before then. If what you showed at your computer also showed the exact same thing on the projector to the kids and you liked it like that, then you would want to change your display settings to be the second choice. If you didn't like it like that and you had it where before COVID, when you had one monitor and one projector, if you were dragging things over and you liked it like that, that way your screen was yours, my suggestion would be to set your displays up with the one, two, three and have all of those separate. So this second option where the numbers combined means that you are choosing one of your monitors to duplicate itself on the projector. And that's really nice if your projector is like behind you, so you're not having to constantly turn around all the time to move your mouse to kind of drag things over. And if dragging is really not your thing, then you're going to want to choose this option on the right. And so when we're talking about these options, how do we even set it up? How do we get there? So I'm going to actually share my desktop right now. And so on my desktop, I would right click and then I would go to display settings. And you can do this on any desktop. It doesn't matter which monitor you're doing it on, as long as you're at your teacher computer. When you click on display settings, I see numbers one, two, and three. If all you see is just numbers one and two, turn on your projector because your computer won't actually recognize that you have three screens until your projector is on. Now, I have no idea what these numbers correspond to, right? I don't know what number two is. I don't know what three is or what number one is. So there's this button known as identify. When you click on identify, you should see a number pop up on the bottom of your screen and then it'll disappear. You can hit identify as much as you want just so that number appears on your screen. So for me, you guys are looking at screen number one. My screen number two is my new big monitor. And then screen number three is actually my projector all the way across the room in front. So right now I've got everything completely separate, but I don't want it separate. I want my monitor to show up on my projector as well. 
because I don't want to have to constantly look all the way across the room and move my glasses. That way I can see something far away. So I'm going to click on my screen once and I'm actually going to go all the way down here to where it says multiple displays. There's a box under multiple displays and it gives me a few options. It says that I can duplicate my desktop on one and two or duplicate my desktop on one and three. What does this mean? It means that I'm taking my monitor numbers. So when we hit identify, numbers popped up on my screen. And so I have to remember those numbers in my head on, okay, which screens do I want to have the same image? Well, mine were one and three. Your numbers might be different. So when I click it, it gives me an option that I can keep them and I can keep my settings as they are, or it'll revert. If I choose not to do anything, it'll go back to normal. I'm actually going to click to keep it. And so what's happening now is when I scroll up, it shows that my screen number two is just for me. And my screen one and three show my monitor and my projector combined. Now your numbers might be different. Your projector might be screen number two. Your projector might be screen number one. So you're going to have to hit identify in order to figure it out. Now that I've combined my screens, when I hit identify, my screen tells me I am number one and a number three. If I don't want it like this, then I would just click on that combined screen. I would scroll down to the bottom and go here under multiple displays and choose extend. And then I would hit keep changes. Something that has happened to other teachers before is on the screen that they're sharing, they might see black lines on the top or on the side. If that happens to you in your display settings, it would just be under display resolution. You wanna make sure that this says recommended. So if you have any black lines showing on either your projector or your other monitor, you wanna just click on all of your screens, go down here and make sure that this resolution is at recommended. So I'll click on my screen number two, this is at recommended. So there's a lot of other options, but I wanna make sure it's at recommended. And I'll click on my screen three. Oh, and my display resolution doesn't have a recommended setting. So I'm just gonna leave it at what it is. And that is how to set up your display settings. So now we're going to transition into how and which screen do I want to share? So we have, you know, our multiple displays, we have our three displays. So which ones do I want to share and what situations do I want to share those? So for example, if I'm doing a presentation and I want to share the screen with the presentation on it, that way I want to share that screen. Now I'm going to have that screen that I'm sharing probably on my projector. Because the reason why I would do this is because I have kids in class and I have kids at home. If I'm sharing that screen and that screen is, for example, screen three, which is my projector, that way the kids in class can see it because they're looking at the projector in the front of the room, but then also my kids at home can see it because that's the screen that I'm sharing with them. I can also do this for my document camera. If I'm sharing my document camera and I'm working from my document camera, I would move my document camera to, in this case, screen three, so my kids in class can see it, and then I'm going to be sharing that screen through Zoom or Google Meet, and so that way my kids at home can see it as well. If I have my separate screens, like how we have our setup right now, I would just make sure that it is on the screen, whether it's screen one, screen two, or screen three, whatever screen is going to be my projector. If I had them duplicated, I would just make sure that it is on the duplicated one that is going to be the projector and my monitor at the same time too. If I'm writing on my board, if I'm up from behind my desk and I'm working at a whiteboard, then I would make sure that my students are pinning me so that they could see my image larger and not just a little square within the grid. So then they can really see what I'm working on and what I'm doing when I'm at the board. So now we're gonna look at like your document camera setup. When you use your document camera, you wanna use a program known as Sphere, which is on your desktop. And the reason why we want you to use that is that actually shows your document camera and you can move that window to any screen you choose. And that's really, really important for when we're doing this type of blended synchronous teaching where we have kids in class and kids at home. So if I wanted to open up my Sphere, right now you see it on the screen and I'm able to drag it off to where you can't see it and then drag it on here to where you can't. And so my kids in class see this because I'm dragging it on my projector right now. 
And then everyone at home sees it too because I'm sharing this entire screen. So instead of sharing the application, I chose to share screen three with my kids at home. And my kids in class, they see screen three because screen three is my projector. So they can see my document camera set up and then I slide it off the screen. And now I'm just back to my PowerPoint that I was sharing previously. So if your camera takes over your video feed, then you can actually change where your video comes from. So right now my document camera is just going to sphere, but my kids still see me, which is important. I want them to always still have a visual of me as their teacher, but I can show them anything I want on this document camera. So right now you see the document camera, it can make it full screen, but you also still see me as your teacher. Sometimes what was happening is some teachers would use their document camera and that would actually replace their physical view themselves. But instead of that, we want our kids to see us all the time. So that's why we use the program called Sphere because it really, really helps with sharing the document camera. So when you go to share your screen, you don't want to go to advance and you don't want to choose document camera. You want to just actually choose the program Sphere. So now we're going to get into ways that you can facilitate a class discussion with kids in class and kids at home at the same time. So one thing that you can do is you can display your Zoom kids on your projector. And then that way the kids in class can see the kids that are at home. And then you can have your Logitech camera facing your kids in class. So then your kids at home can see the kids that are in class. You would then use your microphone and the speaker from the Logitech camera to be the central hub where audio is coming in and audio is coming out. So I would use that microphone so then the kids at home could hear the kids that are in here. But then I would use the speakers so then the kids in class can hear the kids that are at home. So that would be so a good way to kind of facilitate a class discussion so everyone is able to, to the best of our ability, see each other and hear each other. So if we look at this setup, and we'll show you live in a second. If we look at this setup, this is showing how the Logitech camera is facing the students. The Zoom window or Google Meet is on the projector screen. So we would have all the multiple kids showing up on the screen. And then the teacher is still here behind their desk with their six feet from their students. And they could have all their notes up that they need. And the teacher's just facilitating that class discussion. So the students are actually doing the talking because the students in class are looking at the projector and they're seeing the kids at home. The students in class are also having their video feed shown to the students at home because that new Logitech camera is being pointed at the class and not you as the teacher. So the kids can still see you if you have your camera pointed where you're still in the corner, but really the discussion's happening between your students. And we know that discussion is one of the best ways for our students to actually learn the material. It has a really high effect size. And so as much as we can replicate what we were doing before COVID and do it now, we definitely want to. And so this is a way that if you have a lot of debates in your class or your students talk to each other all the time, or even if they do group reading for out, for out loud reading in ELA classes or even history discussions, this is a great way to incorporate that back into your normal routine. And then this is just another angle, another example of what we were talking about. So I have my distance learning kids on the projector so my kids in class can see them. I have my camera pointed towards the kids in class so my kids at home can see them. And I'm using that microphone and the speaker from the Logitech camera so everyone is able to hear everyone and able to, um, everyone's able to hear everybody, whether you are at home or whether you are in class. So then we're going to stop sharing our screens for a little bit because we want you to actually see live what we're talking about. So I'm going to switch my camera to my Logitech Meetup camera. That way you can just see the view of my classroom. And what this would look like if we were facilitating a class discussion is I'm actually, I'm carrying my Chromebook with me everywhere I go. That way I can still see my kids, they still see me. And this is definitely an option to carry your Chromebook. You do not have to, because if you're just getting up to move the camera just for a little bit, 
and then you're going to go back to your safe space at your teacher desk, you definitely can. So right now, I have the camera facing my students so that they can see each other. I've got it zoomed out, that way they can see everybody in class. And then I'm here at my teacher desk. That way I'm in a safe spot. I can see if my kids are chatting. And what I can do is I can now move my Zoom feed to the board. That way the students are seeing each other. So the students at home are seeing all of the students in class. And the students in class are seeing the kids at home. So a student that would be sitting here would then look here when they're talking to the kids at home, and then they can look up at the projector and they can start responding to each other. And then me as a teacher, I'm just sitting here and I'm just facilitating what's happening. So I can sit anywhere that I feel safe. I can be at my podium, I can be behind my desk, I can be walking around. It just depends on your own comfort level, but you're able to still have those discussions between your kids in class and your kids at home by just moving your Zoom kids on the projector screen and pointing the camera at your students. And this makes it really, really great from having the Zoom kids up there. That way you can always see them. So you can see if someone's asking a question because they're on the projector screen. You can see if someone's raising their hand because they're on the projector screen. And you can see their faces, their foreheads, their blank cameras, but everything's just up there. So that it's just a discussion between the students like they would normally have in a normal school year pre-COVID. So now we're going to switch focus from showing you how you can facilitate a class discussion to talk about monitoring your students in class and online. So something that you can do to monitor both students in class and online at the same time is you might need to rearrange some things on your desk to make it more accessible to you because you may be sitting at your desk and you may be out from behind your desk. So maybe you might need to rearrange things where your monitor and your keyboard are more accessible for you. And we're gonna show you this here in a minute. Maybe an option for you is carrying your Chromebook with you so you can monitor the kids on Zoom and see the chat while you're up from behind your desk. Whatever option you choose, make sure that you are talking to both. You're talking to the kids in class and you're talking to the kids at home. We want to make sure that we are accessing both of them, that we're reaching out to both of them, that we're making sure that everyone is together and everyone's with us during the lesson. So each person's setup is going to differ because it depends on where your desk is in your classroom, where your whiteboards are, where your projectors are, but these are a few options that you can do to monitor both kids in class and at home at the same time. So if we look at this setup, this setup illustrates three different screens. So you'll see two monitors here at the teacher desk. And then on the projector is the document camera. The document camera is for the kids in class to see. But then on Zoom, you're gonna be screen sharing your document camera if you want your kids at home to see what you're writing on there. You're sitting at your teacher desk. So you have your kids either on Google Meet or on Zoom right in front of you. And then you can have whatever you need on the second screen. You can have Aries, you can have GoGuardian, you can have your email. So if you have your three separate screens, your projector is what you're always sharing with your students. And then the other two monitors are free to give. There's another example of being able to have yourself up at the front of the board and your kids at home can see because that camera is pointed at you so they can see you working on the board. The kids in class can see you because you are physically in class with them. And then your Chromebook, an option is that your Chromebook's up there with you. So then that way you can check in on your kids at home, you can monitor chat, you can um, answer any questions because they're right there with you on your Chromebook up there when you're working at the board. And then here's just a different angle. So this is with the teacher desk in the back. So as you can see in this classroom, the teacher desk is all the way in the back, the whiteboard and the projector are actually on this side right here. So this shows you that you can bring your Chromebook if you'd like up to the front of the class with you. That way you can see what the kids are seeing from you on the Chromebook. And then you can also monitor the chat if you choose to still have the chat on and available. And then in the middle of the room, this is where the Logitech speaker comes up. And you'll always use this Logitech Meetup camera for its speaker and its microphone. The video is what you'll be switching. 
Because if you're standing at the front of the room, you'd use your Logitech Meetup for video. But if you're back at your teacher desk, you would use that little itty bitty camera on top of our monitor that we use now. And then this is the same setup, but just from a different angle in the classroom. So you can see the teacher stations in the back, projectors on in the front, Logitech camera is on facing the kids, and then the Chromebook is up there for the teacher when they are working at the board, being able to access the students that are either on Zoom or Google Meet. We're now going to kind of take you through some live setups of showing you what it actually looks like when the teacher's up and moving around the room. So now how we have it set up in the classroom is my teacher desk is all the way in the back and I am up here at the board right now. I'm using my Logitech meetup camera right here and then this camera is my Chromebook. I have the Chromebook with me right now so that I can monitor chat but also so that I can see what I'm even doing with my Logitech camera. We have a couple of presets on the camera that I can use to follow me around. So if I wanted to walk over here to the projector screen, I can just hit a preset that I had pre-programmed and I can point out anything I need to on my projector. If I wanted to come back over here to the board and I wanted to write something on the board, I can do that. And I can still see my distance learning kids here on my Chromebook. But I can also see what my kids at home see because I have my Chromebook with me. So the Chromebook essentially serves two purposes. When I'm up here and my teacher desk is all the way in the back, it allows me to see my kids, but it's also allowing me to monitor the chat and see myself. That way I know, well, let me zoom out a little bit. So you'll see the Logitech camera zooming out. Or maybe I want to show the kids the entire front board. Or maybe I wanted to actually have the camera zoom in. That way I can be over here and I can point out that we need to make sure we're talking to both students, both those at home on distance learning and those in class with me. So it just gives us a few different options. And by using those presets, I can want to in the front of my room. And I know that my camera is going to follow me because I've already set the presets to follow where I want it to on the board itself. So I know where the presets are. So I'm just walking within the view of them. And I put an extra desk up here in the front so I can put my Chromebook so I don't have to carry it. Or I can use my podium that I put right here. And I can set my Chromebook up there as well. So this is just an option for if your teacher desk is all the way in the back of your room and your projector and whiteboard are up on the front. So now we're gonna take a look at if your teacher desk is right next to your whiteboard. So on this view right here, you are seeing that this is my teacher camera. On this camera on this way, you're just seeing the entire area that I have to work with. So this is my only whiteboard space and my teacher desk is here. So what can I do? Well, this is actually one of my favorite setups because you can actually just take your teacher monitor and spin it around, which I'm gonna do right now. So you can come to your desk and you can actually just turn your monitor. That way you can see all of your students that are at home on a nice big screen and you can see the chat and you can see yourself. You can also be at the board. So then I can zoom in with my remote and let me go up. I can zoom in and you can see what I'm writing on the board. I can see what I'm zooming in on because I have my monitor turned to face me. So this right here is my monitor that I just turned to look at me while I am on the board. And so now I can erase whatever I want and I can write anything and my kids can see it clear as day because my camera's right here in front of me. So if I wanted to just talk about, you know, um, be, oops. well, this marker doesn't work. So that takes us to another thing. You need to make sure that your markers all work because they all got dried out since we haven't been back in our classrooms on the board since March. So if I like to talk with my students about speed versus force. I can write on my board 
and all my students at home would see it and all my students in class would see it. And then this would get us talking about, okay, well, does the mask affect speed? You know, what does force really affect? And this could get us into the equation where speed is distance divided by time and force equals mass times acceleration. And that could get a discussion going where I'm then flipping the camera around and I'm having my students talk to each other. But this way, I'm having my desk space right next to my board with me just flipping over my monitor, I'm able to see all of my students right here. I'm able to see myself and I'm able to monitor the chat if I choose to have it on. Now we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about the speaker and the microphone choices. So when you are using Zoom or Google Meet and you are picking which speaker and microphone that you want to do, our recommendation would be to always have the speaker and microphone be set to your Logitech Meetup camera. It's going to be great because it's going to be a good microphone to pick up conversations of students both in class and it'll help those kids at home be able to see to hear them. But then it's also going to be good because that speaker is going to help the kids in class hear the kids at home. That is going to be kind of a constant hub for all of your audio and your sound. But then when we're talking about earlier, we were talking about video feeds. That's where you can toggle between your webcam and your Logitech camera. But your central hub for your audio and your sound should be coming from that Logitech camera is what our recommendation is. So to make sure that that is set up correctly, in Zoom, you're going to go in underneath your microphone settings, you're going to click that little up arrow. Underneath the speaker section, you're going to make sure that you've chosen the echo canceling Logitech meetup camera. Same thing in the microphone section. You want to make sure that that microphone Logitech meetup is checked there as well. So you won't have to worry about toggling back and forth between those, but you're going to be toggling for video, but for your speaker and your microphone, make sure those are the ones that are selected for you. And that is what we are using actually right now. We're just using one Logitech meetup for its speaker and its microphone quality as well. So when we talk about managing students, we also are going to have to mention that you might have to change how you've been managing your students within Zoom. I know that Zoom and also um, soon Google Meet will have the ability where you can have your students request to unmute yourself. If you're doing this blended synchronous teaching, there's no way that you can be at the board and unmute every single student that you want to talk. So that might have to change. Also, we had wonderful suggestions from some teachers where they said that they've already turned off the chat and they're bringing their class back to what it was when we had students in the class where if a student had a question, they have to unmute themselves and actually talk to you. So that while you're actually writing out a lesson and you're explaining different grammar rules, a student can stop you right away and say, wait a second, Miss Ali, can you repeat what you just said? Yeah, sure. And then it just helps you with that reteaching, with that checking for understanding at that point where you're like, you know what? Let me explain this a different way. Let me come at this from a different angle for my students. So you have a lot of different options when it comes to just managing your students with this blended and synchronous teaching that we have going on. You can turn off the chat and that has worked for a lot of teachers. Some teachers have suggested that, well, I could just have one student in class be logged into Zoom and monitor the chat for me. You definitely can, but I just want you to be aware of that student is now going to be focusing on the chat and also trying to focus on your lesson. So just be aware that you're going to have that student kind of doing two jobs. And then you also might want to change where the chat goes. So in Zoom, you have the option of having everyone chat to each other or all of your students can only send you a private message. That might have to change unless you're going to figure out a way that you can carry your Chromebook with you or monitor the chat all the time. You might want to have to rework that. And right now, as we're before the transition, we don't have kids in the classroom yet, but we're getting ready for that. Right now is a great time to just kind of retrain our students for what class is going to look like. If we're going to turn off the chat, turn it off tomorrow, and then train our students to unmute themselves. Because we've already solved most of those problems where we couldn't hear the students. We know that, well, if they turn off their video feed, their voice comes out beautifully. And we're going to have less students on our bandwidth, less students in Google Meet, less students in Zoom. So it's going to be a lot easier. But those of you that are using your random calling and your CFUs right now, and you're having students actually talk to you, 
we've solved a lot of those issues with the audio problems, but definitely if you're still having those problems, reach out to Mark or I, and we can help come up with solutions to help those students with their internet connectivity issues. But if you're not having any issues at all, definitely have these students talk, have them read, have them talk to each other, have them talk out loud, because they'd be doing that if they were all with us in class right now as well. We also wanted to mention Go Garden because right now some teachers have it set up where it's on a specific schedule and that schedule is set up to the way the schedule is right now. And once students, once we transition and students start coming back, that schedule is going to change. So this is kind of just a reminder of, hey, you might want to check your schedule and make sure you need to make any adjustments to make those adjustments. Also, if you want to make sure that you have certain scenes and filters set up, you want to kind of make sure that those are put in place beforehand as well. And then don't really stress over monitoring students in GoGuardian. I mean, it's there for you as a tool, but don't have it cause you a bunch of stress. And then also give yourself, like we talked about before, give yourself some grace in this aspect. Make sure that, you know, now would be a good time because we don't have students back yet. They're going to be coming back soon, but now would be a good time to make sure that all those things are adjusted, those things are set up the way you want. So it isn't just another thing that you're trying to manage when you have kids back in the classroom. And then what can you do now? Well, now is the perfect time to test out your markers because I know they're dry from a whole year of just sitting in our classroom. Test out the lighting. So what you saw when I was actually at the board is I noticed that I had two lights that were reflecting on my whiteboard space. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna need to go through all my lights and figure out what can I have off? What can I have on? Test that out with your kids in distance learning now. That way they can tell you, yes, Ms. Ali, I can see it, or no, I can't. Test out your different USB connections. Can your students see the camera clearly from it being plugged into the monitor versus the actual CPU? Test out your Chromebook connections. If you're gonna use your Chromebook with your new Logitech camera, does it come out clear? Is it blurry? Ask your students since they're at home right now. Turn on your projector. Can you find the remote? Do you know where it is? Is your projector hooked up to your computer systems like it should be? If it's not hooked up and you can't drag things and you can't see your computer screen on your projector, please reach out to Marshall or I and we can definitely get those connected for you. Test out as much as you can. Test out changing things with the chat and just let your students know. Talk to them. Say, hey, you guys, today we're going to just test out this setup. Can you see this? Can you see me? Can you guys write in the chat? Figure out how you're going to manage everything yourself now. That way when the day comes, you're less stressed out. Because I know that first day of blended synchronous learning, it's going to be so much for us, even just looking at the schedule. So as long as we can do just those little things, it's all going to add up and it's going to make that first day, that first week, that much easier. Next, we want to talk about some common issues that we've encountered with teachers and some solutions that we have come up with. So one of them could be, my camera is asleep, how do I turn it back on? So with your Logitech camera, you have your microphone, excuse me, you have your remote and on your remote in the middle here, there is a little home button. If you hold that home button down for three seconds or so, then it should wake up the camera and you should be good to go. Sometimes we heard that, you know, my picture quality is a little blurry. My students are saying that, you know, I'm using this camera, but that my camera quality is a little blurry. Each of the cameras had a little plastic film over the front to kind of protect the lens. Some teachers forgot that that film was on. They took the film off, picture quality, no problem. Maybe it's something that things weren't connected correctly in the back of the camera, they weren't connected securely. Just checking those connections in the back of the camera, back of the computer, make sure everything's hooked up correctly. When using my Chromebook and my desktop, I'm noticing that I'm getting this high-pitched echo or I'm getting this high-pitched sound or my students are telling me that there's this high-pitched sound. That's because you have your speakers and your microphone on in both places. That's where you're going to get that echo and that feedback. So make sure that you have one station is all muted and the other station is where your sound is coming from. When we were talking about using the Logitech as your microphone and your speaker, make sure that that's on, but make sure your computer is muted so you don't get that feedback coming from your Chromebook or from your desktop computer. If you hear an echo in your room, that just means that you have two audio sources going at the same time. So you want to mute one and just have the audio coming from one 
device. This, this happens when you're using two devices in the same room. You want to make sure that one's muted and the other one is just the sole place where all the audio and sound is coming from. And now the tough part, planning for a period. What I can say is definitely lean on your PLC. Your PLC is going to be your supporting branch right now. With the schedule, it's going to be a little hard because we're going to have our distance learning kids all week, and then we're going to have alternating days with our other in-person kids. Science is going to be tough. You're going to have to be planning different lessons to do in the morning compared to the afternoon because the times are different. You also might want to dabble into recording the labs or recording little videos for your students. That way your distance learning kids actually get the material. Or there are some teachers that even suggested, well, I could have my DL kids partner up with my Monday in-person kids and my other DL kids partner up with my Tuesday in-person. That way you're doing group work, but it's between groups of, that are, of students that are in class and students that are at home. For other subjects like history, math, ELA, electives, it's really going to depend on how you taught pre-COVID. So we're going to have to kind of dig back and think, okay, over a year ago, how was I teaching? I know it's felt like we've been in this COVID world for a really long time, but how are we teaching before and how can we make that happen now? And we definitely can. If you were using presentations before and you would stand up at your board and you would talk about it, you can still do that with history, ELA, and math. If you had your kids debate with each other, you can still do that using the Logitech camera and having the kids see and speak to each other through the camera lens. If you're in like a shop class or an ag class, you're definitely going to have to lean on your PLCs and you're going to have to figure out, okay, well, what kind of lessons am I going to have to do? What could we do now? What haven't we covered throughout the year? And how can we incorporate this into the rest of the time that we have for this year? So it's definitely going to take a lot of thinking. And remember that multiple brains is better than one. I don't have all the answers. Marshall doesn't have all the answers. But as we all work together, we can definitely come up with some workable ideas. So definitely lean on your PLC during this time. We also wanted to touch on this for our focus. And we want to make sure that, yes, we need to cover standards. Yes, we need to cover content. Yes, you know, we might be feeling like people are behind and that we haven't been able to cover the things that we want. But more importantly, we want to make sure, and this is something that the district has been pushing all year, is we want to make sure that social emotional well-being is in the forefront and is the focus. Work with your PLCs on this. Make sure that you and your kids are in a good place because if we're not mentally in a good place, emotionally in a good place, we're not going to be able to receive the content and your students aren't going to be able to receive the content that you're trying to deliver to them. So making sure that everyone's emotional well-being is in a good place. Remember, we, you know, these kids are going to be coming back to school and they haven't been on campus in over a year. Some kids haven't actually been on the campus that they're going to be going to. So they're going to be going through a lot emotionally. So make sure that our mental health and our ours and our students' emotional well-being is the focus. Make sure that we're all in a good emotional, mental place there so then we can actually move forward with the content and the students can absorb the information that we're trying to teach them. So that's what we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for spending time with us going through this. Um, we know this is going to be a tricky situation, but like we've said, work with each other. We're all in this together. Lean on your PLCs. Lean on Sakara and I. If you guys have questions, if you're curious about setups, if you're curious about things that can work in your classroom, lean on us. Contact us. We're here to help and we're here to support you. So thank you so much again for spending some time with us and we hope you have a great day.